cheers is filmed before a live studio audience. So the woodchuck says to the lumberjack, I was talking to the log. <laughs> I never much cared for jokes in which animals speak. <laughs> uh, but no, no, neither do I. I just use that as kind of awful joke a mediocre accountant might use. <laughs> Uh, can we uh, have some coffee? What do you say? A little cup no, of coffee? No, thank you. It keeps me awake. Well, I can see why you wouldn't want that. Hey, no. Look, what's he doing now? I'd say he's fixing a cigarette lighter of some sort. Yeah, yeah. Perhaps to the terminally naive. <laughs> Those of us in the know can spot a uh, highly sensitive Rolleiflex espionage camera. <laughs> yep, who oh, you? Yeah, look, he's taking pictures of us right now. Oh, come on, man. Just because he looks like a spy and acts like a spy doesn't mean he is a spy, does it? I think it pretty much does, Sam. <laughs> you know, everybody. <laughs> what can I do for you, Mr. Peterson? Elope with my wife. What do you think, huh? Hey, down. Hey, Jimmy. Pretend we're having a normal conversation, huh? With you? <laughs> Party, my house, Saturday. 12 noon, chef. You're invited. A party at noon? Shh, keep it under your head, will you? You're the only one to buy invited. I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, all right? Hurt mine. <laughs> hey, man, 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 look, we're going to have plenty of beer, cold cuts galore, big bucket of slaw. Oh, you're going to love it. And yeah, we're going to uh, maybe do a little painting. Painting? Yeah, just the uh, attic. Well, that's not the point. You know, I'm inviting a lot of guys from the post office. It'll be a great time. Yeah, love I, don't, I don't think so, Cliff, really. Hey, what's the problem here, now? You know I hate to paint. You know that. Oh, yeah, well, so who doesn't? But, hey, uh, with all these guys around here, I think it'd take no time at all. All right. Hey, don't tell Vera, all right? Yep. She get upset I haven't finished painting our house, yeah? So, uh, how far you got? Oh, I bought the little hat. Come on. Doesn't anyone want to talk to Fraser? I mean, he's a trained psychiatrist. Hey, you're the one who had a brain overhaul. Aren't you still under warranty or something? <laughs> If I talk to him in any personal way, he'll interpret it as a romantic overture. Look, we don't even need someone with a real problem. One of you could go to him with some symptoms, let him advise you, wait a while, and tell him you feel better. Oh, I don't know, Diane. <clears throat> well, I think it's a good plan. Well, thank you, Woody. Oh, it's quick, simple, and you don't have to send away for one of those kits or anything. <laughs> what kits? You know, like the coyote does in the Roadrunner cartoons? <laughs> so by the way, now, I always wondered, if he can afford to buy those kids to catch the Roadrunner, why can't he afford to buy something to eat? Well, I think you're missing the point here. It's not that uh, Wild E. Coyote wants to eat, necessarily, or that he wants to eat a Roadrunner. What he wants is uh, to eat that particular Roadrunner. <laughs> It's very existential. We're trying to save a man's life here. Yeah, Cliff, really. Besides, I have to disagree with you, you know. You never see the coyote eat anything else. Good <laughs> afternoon, uh... everybody. What can I get you, Mr. Peterson? Clifford Clavin's head. <laughs> well, what are you upset with Mr. Clavin about? Yeah, well, I spent the whole day yesterday at Cliff's house at a painting party, and I was the only one who showed up. <laughs> I painted all day while Cliff and his mother argued over who forgot to pick up the food and beer. What, did they at least thank you for your hard work? Well, but that depends if you consider your friend sweats like a mule, thank you. My pleasure. <laughs> yep. Got a date with Kala. Seriously? Well, are you kidding? She fell for me like a sack of cannolis. <laughs> Hey, you gotta love them, the little wenches. Oh, Clifford, may I speak with you for a moment? Yeah, certainly, Diane. I've been thinking about it, and I've decided to break my engagement and join you in your evening of triumph. You'll go with me? I wouldn't miss it for the world. Oh, did you hear that? Diane will go to the ball with me. I'm taking Diane to the ball. Cliff, Cliff, think just a minute now. What's wrong with this picture? <laughs> Sam, change for 20. Oh, Cliff. <laughs> Gee, this is big. Big and beautiful. 
Yeah, why don't you uh, yeah, try it on? Oh, oh, no. Something this big and beautiful should be preserved. Oh, oh don't worry about that, Diane. That's uh, guaranteed to last through a 20-knot win. <laughs> Baby spit up on my dress. I had to buy a brooch big enough to cover it. Real diamond chips, 75 bucks. What is Whitey doing here dressed like that? Oh, uh, Diane's the only date I could scrape up at the last minute. Oh, yeah? What are you paying her? Uh, transistor radio. Ooh, a cheap date. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> yeah, good evening, you lucky dogs and doggets. Yeah, inside this airtight container is a taste sensation second to none. Get your taste buds ready. Ma's homemade pretzels. <laughs> You know, they, they kind of look like they were made in a home, Cliff. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, yeah, they're a little misshapen, you know. Ma's arthritis made her hands stiffen up on it. That explains the smell of menthol item, then. <laughs> yeah, hey, uh, here you go, Sam. Shell down, they're completely organic. So, uh, what word would uh, you folks use to describe these babies? Filling. Okay, all right, they're filling. No, no, I just lost one. <laughs> Get your fresh pretzels in. Delivered to you, piping hot from Mark Clavin's kitchen. Come on, Norm, you're his friend. You promised you'd tell him to stop bringing that stuff in here. All right. I'll take care of it while I still have some teeth left. <laughs> hey, uh, incidentally, Normie, I don't mind telling you, uh, you know, how much uh, Ma appreciates the fact that you guys like her pretzels. Great, Cliff. Yeah, listen, she's listen. She's been uh, down in the dumps these past 40 years. Yeah, well, when she heard how you felt about these babies, well... She just broke right down and cried. Oh, boy, pretzels. <laughs> oh, see, it's time I stopped avoiding the success that's been nipping at my heels all these yeah. <laughs> My whole life stands before me. What? Uh -huh. I'm poised here on the brink of destiny, guys. Yeah. Look out, world, get off my runway. Oh, huh? there you are. Hey, is everybody ready for the slideshow? Yeah, what the hell, I got nothing better to do. <laughs> Oh, God, that's great. Oh, I tell you, it's going to be so great to have somebody up there with a sense of humor. That's terrific. And by the way, that was a brilliant job you did on the Stallings audit. Oh, you know, I mean, who else would have figured out how to write off Mrs. Stallings' breast reduction as a depreciation? Yeah. That's great. That's great. You know, I hear that Stallings will be eligible for parole in our lifetime. <laughs> Does anyone have more fun than bookkeepers? <laughs> Face it, Norm, you deserve to win. You're more experienced, you're a nicer guy, and you got some professional ethics, unlike Morrison. What are you talking about? Are you kidding? Yeah. You don't know about Morrison and the boss's wife? They've been making it every Tuesday night for the past five months. Jeffrey, I can't believe that. No, I'm serious. Once a week? <laughs> well, I guess you're young, you can handle that kind of schedule. <laughs> Uh, there's something you're not telling me here. I mean, why didn't I get this job? Oh, I suppose I owe you the truth, Peterson. Well, yeah, you do. It's your wife. Well, my, what does my wife have to do with this? Well, she she didn't fit in with the other company wives. That's Vera's a wonderful woman. What are well, you talking? I, I'm sure in her own circle she is. But well, that that lunch the other wives took her to yesterday was a uh, sort of a test. A spouse has to be able to mix easily with other people in the company. That's just great. Well, well, that's great. Sir, tell you what, if my wife isn't good enough for this company, neither am I, all right? Oh, I'm sorry you feel that way, Peterson, mm -hmm. but I understand, and, and I admire you for your loyalty to her. Now, wait a minute. Uh, Morrison's wife is somehow more acceptable than mine? Is that... No, no, as a matter of fact, Morrison's never had a wife. Oh, yeah, well, I wouldn't be too sure about that one, sir. Hi, <laughs> Um... Listen, honey, uh, no point beating around the bush here. I didn't get the promotion. In fact, uh, I just got so mad at the guy, I just went ahead and quit. 
I mean, yeah, yes, yes, they did. They gave me a reason, huh? They said that well, what they said was, uh, I'm just not the right man for the job. You, know? <laughs> you just face it, honey. I, I'm a loser. I don't know why you just don't go just pack up your bags and leave me. Hello? <laughs> it's, it's, it's very funny. <laughs> um, listen, sweetie, I, uh, there's something I have to tell you. Even on a terrible day like today, there, I feel like I'm the luckiest man in the world because I married you. I don't know, I've had two, three, maybe. <laughs> I'll talk to you later, yeah. Norman. Yeah. That's one of the finest things I have ever seen a man do. Yes. Oh, great. I'm unemployed. Ah, oh, don't worry, Mr. Peterson. Something else will come along. No, no, no. I mean, great. I'm unemployed. <laughs> 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 